I just wanted to start off and getting to know you as a person besides, you know, going and playing professional basketball, just kind of getting to know you as a person behind the game. Um, so I guess just kind of start off, you know, where are you from and how you got into basketball? Yeah, so I'm from the Chicago suburbs, uh, oh, nice. Aurora, okay. Aurora, Illinois. And, um, you know, basketball was easy to get involved with just because of the fact that Chicago basketball with yeah. you know as we saw in the, the latest documentary the last dance with michael jordan yeah. scotty pippen and dennis Rodman. oh so good yeah it was amazing so like for me like as a kid even though i was around for part of it i was too little to know what was going on so for me to you know see it in that documentary uh meant the world to me but but um you know to, to be rooting for basketball like that to know my parents old city of chicago and the state of illinois yeah that's kind of what brought me into basketball along with the fact that my older sister played basketball. So um, that's pretty much how I got started. And it pretty much started young, like around, you know, four or five years old. And uh, from there, you know, I just kept it going. That's so crazy. So you kind of grew up around it. I feel like a lot of people that get into sports, like either their brother or their sister played. And so you kind of get into it a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. So growing up, were you like a big Bulls fan and like Michael Jordan and everything around that, even though you were young, like you said? But. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, I was a big Bulls fan for sure. I, you know, I, I'm pretty sure I went to one game when MJ was still with the Bulls, but I was just too young to really know what was going on. That's my, crazy. My dad took me. And, um, but yeah, like that, you know, that that's pretty much what started everything. You know, Michael Jordan was pretty much like this. I mean, legend. Like this legend. It was almost like he was, wasn't even real just because of the yeah. fact that all these stories, you see the pictures and it's like, yeah. wow, you know, I truly do want to be like Mike and, and you know that's kind of where it all started um but the rich history that that they have and, and to see people like Dennis Rodman on the team you oh. know he's known for like his hustling and, yes. and stuff. it's like the Bulls pretty much had all the components that they need to to make a great team and that's the reason why you know they were able to win six championships but um yes. you know like I'm I'm still a Bulls fan to this day it just gets harder and harder now <laughs> <laughs> It, it, I agree. Uh, That's yeah, so crazy. So, so hopefully they can figure it out and, and you know, we can get back on uh, doing They're what we used to do. Yeah. That's, yeah, no, growing up and watching them at least a little bit, but obviously we weren't kind of understanding the depths of everything going on. But mm -hmm. even now, like side note, I met Dennis Rodman probably like mm -hmm. three years ago and it was still probably one of my favorite memories to this day. He was yep. so cool, so nice. Yep. Like, but I just like how he brands himself outside of basketball too. Cause you don't really get to see that a lot in other sports, mm -hmm. um, just basketball in general, like the style, everyone has their own unique style. And I feel like mm -hmm. he kind of started that wave for a lot of people, yeah. especially athletes. So I think that's just like, it's so interesting to me, but I really love that story. So did you play in high school and then you went off to college, correct? Correct. Yeah. I played in high school four years. Um, and then, you know, right after that, went to Santa Clara university to attend okay. college and, uh, you know, it's just really cool just because of the fact that, you know, I've been in the Midwest for so long. So, you know, part of my decision in choosing Santa Clara was the fact that I wanted to go somewhere different and yeah. you know, or something different. So uh, going out to the West Coast was great for me. Um, you know, it opened my eyes and it allowed <laughs> me to, to, to meet new people and, and be around new things. So I enjoyed my time there. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, that's pretty much how my career went. I love that. So are you in Chicago right now then? Yeah, I am. I am. How's the whole, how's the situation going over there with quarantine? You have any like new hobbies or? I mean, you know, you know, my talk show, that's pretty much my new hobby. Yeah. And uh, uh, other than that, you know, I just, you know, trying to look at the the benefits from all this and, you know, yeah. just being able to spend time with family, yeah. uh, being able to, to have more time with them just because, you know, playing basketball in the season, it takes you away, f you know, for yeah. pretty much the whole year. Uh, especially if you play overseas, you know, you really only have a few months with them. So I'm really enjoying this downtime while still, you know, training and, and, and getting ready for whatever might be next. Yeah, exactly. You actually get time to spend with your family and to relax, but also kind of focus on basketball as well. So what's your next step? So tell us a little bit about like your story in the G League too, because I think I've worked in the G League and I think it is the coolest environment because I feel like people don't really understand and get to know you guys because you guys are working so 
hard, but nobody really gets to see, you know, the come up until NBA and they're like, Oh, like he's amazing. He does th this and that. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, I played with the, the Delaware blue coats. Yep. Um, so, you know, the, the Philadelphia 76ers affiliate. So I've been in the G league for two years. Um, yep. I mean, you know, like you said, you know, my experience has been great. And like, you've seen it, uh, yeah. you know, we work really hard. The guys oh. there, you know, were competing every day because, yes. you know, like, you know, the ultimate goal is to try to make it to the NBA. Yeah. And, um, get that call up. Exactly. To get the call up. And we all know how tough it can be. So we're all really, you know, religious in our practices and what we do every single day to, to give ourselves the, the best chances that we can. But I mean, like you said, there's, there's tons of, you know, talent. Uh, among all the guys that are in the G League yeah. that have nothing to do with the sport of basketball. They, you know, everything, like you just said, like other things that people like to do. So I think um, the G League is good in a sense because of the fact that the season's really not as long. Yep. And uh, it allows guys to explore their other hobbies during yeah. that downtime that they may have. But for sure, when the season's going on, like, you know, we're going at it and we're really giving it our all to give ourselves the best shot. Oh, yeah. I think it's so much fun. To be honest with you, I love going to G League games as opposed to NBA games because I feel like you guys are just – you can see the passion and dedication because you guys are really trying to get to that next level. So you guys are really competitive mm -hmm. when playing. And then you're seeing these guys on this level and you're mm -hmm. having more of that interaction, I guess, with the fans mm -hmm. and getting to know them a little better. And then you get to see them on TV and you're like – wow, I saw him play, you know, in the G League, and he was amazing. Right. It's so cool to see him on TV now. Exactly. So exactly. I think I think people underestimate that. Yeah, I think, you know, I think they do too. And, I, you know, people like me and yourself, we definitely yeah. realize that. And I think that's been one great thing, especially for myself, is seeing the guys that I've played with that have made it now to yeah. the it's like you know it brings a you know excitement yes. to myself you know nobody really has you know any ill will or like um you know jealousy oh to, no when this goes on like we're all happy for each other because yes. we know how hard it is so for me to see a couple of my guys um you know shake milton and norvell pell who i played with mm -hmm. delaware blue coats and yeah. now see with the philadelphia 76ers you know, I'm just so happy for them. And, and anytime I talk to them, you know, I tell them that. So it's, it's definitely the great, that's the great thing about the G League for sure. Oh yeah. And I feel like too, you guys, like you're saying, you know, you're so supportive. It's never yeah. ill will, like, oh man, he got the call up. If anything, it gives you that motivation. Like, okay, I want to be next type of deal. Exactly. Um, and again, you see that out on the court that you don't even get to really, I mean, you do see it NBA, but you don't see it on that level of like mm -hmm. fighting for that spot to get yeah, to that exactly. level even behind the scenes too, at least in my case, you know, everyone wants that call up regardless if you're the business side or on the court. So it's really, I don't know. I just love touching on the G league because I think it's such a special league mm -hmm. that people are a part of. And if you can see games, I suggest definitely going and seeing you guys cause it's so right. much fun, but I love that. So did you have any hobbies then you kind of figured out during your downtime? <laughs> oh man, you know, <laughs> I really, I really don't know. I mean, my hobbies have always been things like, you know, play ping pong, which I- Oh yeah, see. yep. Like that's just always been fun to me. But I mean, I've gone on more walks than I have yeah. before. Uh, so like, you know, going on, a, you know, like t not like in the beginning when quarantine first started, but towards like, you know, the middle of it. Yeah. Like, All right, I can't- We're like, I gotta get outside. I have to yeah, do stuff. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, you weren't gonna keep me in the house for that. Like I can't. Yeah. You start getting antsy, you're like, come on, I got to go outside. Yeah. But luckily, I mean, it's not that hot in Chicago right now, is it? It's just humid? Oh, yeah, it's just humid. But oh. I mean, that humid is like, it's hot. It makes yeah. it hot. Yeah, well, right now in Arizona, it's 114, and it's dry heat. So, like, going for a walk, it has to be at, like, 9 o'clock at night or, like, 5 a.m. So, <laughs> yeah. See, we still do the same thing. It's kind of like, you know, we have to wait for the right time. So, yes. usually, like, early in the morning or, you know, later in the evening when it starts to die down like obviously our heat is not as crazy as Arizona's but like it's still that heat that humidity is is just another level oh yeah so then yeah. how are you training with everything going on are you just trying to do like at home type of workouts or yeah well at first you know it was at home type of workouts but yeah. uh, right now I'm able to now go into the facility and, and work out and um oh that's awesome especially being in Illinois at least 
we're doing better than most states, so we're staying afloat. Um, yeah. Yeah. You know, oh my gosh. Had, you, you guys have had your troubles. Oh and, my gosh. We're like this and then back and then this. Yeah. It's just, I don't even know exactly. anymore. <laughs> Exactly. I mean, that's the great thing, you know, at least, you know, for my state, you know, the way our governor handled things is, you know, yeah. the reopening phase. I know you guys kind of just like, there was no reopening phase, kind of like just jump right yeah, into just, it. Yeah, here we are, just. Yeah, exactly. For it, so. I don't agree with the way certain states have handled it, but I like the way Illinois has handled it. And that's not to say that there's no cases because there's cases everywhere. Oh, but. no, I mean, we're going to have cases granted probably for a while. So, oh, but wow. it, you guys are handling it in a certain way that where you're able to go work out and do now now work out and go to the facility so uh you know i I still get my basketball workouts in every day and then you know do my weights right after so i have two facilities that i go to 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 get that done and obviously you know we we take precaution and and, oh yeah and social distance and all that stuff but it's good for me now to after a while of doing home workouts to now finally really get in the the weights really take a jump shot and really hit the weights so those things are, are definitely important so what does a typical workout day look like for you? Do you get up at a certain time? Do you have like a specific regimen that you follow? Cause I mean, you're probably getting ready for whenever the season you guys are going to be doing stuff. And exactly. Yeah. You know, so basically I just wake up, you know, anywhere between seven to eight every day and yeah. give myself time to eat breakfast and, and kind of just meditate for a little while before I oh, start looking at I my, like that. yeah, I think that's definitely a key part. In, yeah. in life in general just taking that time for yourself and exactly Especially and now because oh, yes. you know, right now with everything going on you know when you watch the news so much to see what's going on you know besides just coronavirus just obviously oh, yeah. a lot of going on out there like you see yeah. in Portland you see in Chicago uh with the police and everything and so there's a lot of things that can control your mind so to take that morning and kind of like detox and relax before you know you have to start answering messages and and look at things uh that's what i do but then immediately after that then head to the gym around 9 a.m and you know start our workout and then straight from there go to weights and the weights then i'm pretty much done for the day and um unless i want to get an extra workout in by myself which would be at home or or maybe go somewhere where there's sand so i could do a sand workout but that's usually how my day goes long days just getting ready and training long days and and the the, you know it's just tough because i mean this is for everybody it's tough for everybody but because of the fact that as basketball players we usually know the date to look forward to whether whether it's here stateside or whether it's overseas and right now we don't so it's kind of like we're training but how hard do you go like like, (laughs) exactly so it's like me and my trainer the guy that i train with you know we're you know, we have this regiment we're kind of like trying to follow where we're not doing too much and yeah. we're not doing too little. But at yeah. the same time, it's it's all a guess because you don't know. You're still waiting to hear from, from yeah. league off about what is going to happen moving forward. Yeah. You're like, when do I ramp this up and when do I really dial it in of, yeah. you know, with that date, it's getting closer mm-hmm. and closer. But now yeah. you're just, as long as you keep that, you know, constant practicing. Mm-hmm constant training I think that's really smart of you to oh yeah keep for that sure. going, but exactly like I'm happy where I'm at right now because of the fact that we're training at a pretty good level yeah uh, to the point where it's like okay if something were to like if the season were to just pop up right now they told you you're you had ready. a report, like you're today like, I yeah. wouldn't be worried yeah I would be fine I'd be ready to go into training camp to then you know increase it up a little bit more and then be ready for the season yeah if anything it's a blessing in disguise because you're getting this time especially with your family but also to train more and you're getting mm-hmm. better and better every single day so mm-hmm. i think you know you have to look at the bright side of things always look at the bright right? side <laughs> <laughs> i love it so yeah. do you have any passions in life outside of basketball obviously that's a really key part in your life but mm-hmm. is there anything outside of that yeah for sure i mean you know this talk show was one you know i had that on my list for yeah to, to accomplish uh, okay. in 2020. Um, and that was before I knew that coronavirus was gonna come. So that was kind of like a blessing. Oh, perfect guys. timing. <laughs> yeah, so uh, so immediately once that happened and we were sent home, I said, you know, Jerry, this is probably the time to get it done. Yeah. So uh, so that was definitely a passion of mine considering the fact that I majored in communications and always what? had- a- <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Look at us, we're really good at communicating. So come on. <laughs> this is what we do. Yeah, and, uh, and you know my interest in broadcasting. Uh, so I, yeah. you know, this was the perfect time to do it. So I'm glad I did that. And 
I'm sure that I have other interests. I have other things written down that I know that I want to accomplish, but you know, I'm not going to say them right now just because of the fact that, you know, it's like, you know, when you have a million ideas and you oh, just yeah. down, yes. so eventually yeah. I get to a point where I can narrow it down and know exactly what I want to take on at, at a yeah. certain point. So. But that's so cool that you're doing that and you're doing something. I know a lot of people actually like in the G League, they have a lot of passions outside of basketball that people just don't, don't see or get to know, like, especially yeah. you, you have a podcast, you know? things like that, that people are doing. And I think it's so interesting, but who's been your most exciting guest so far on your podcast? All my guests. I love all my guests. All right. Yeah. I was just going to say, it's, it's tough because everyone's so different. Everybody's so different. Um, I don't like any guests more than the other. I'll say that. Um, but I definitely, each interview is special in its own way, but I think maybe the best interview is the one that I that I just did just because of the fact that it's the most recent not because yeah. of anything else but just because it's the most recent so uh the one that I have coming out later this week well I'll call that my best just because it's I love that my most recent work <laughs> so uh but everybody is has been great guests um okay. I've been able to uh learn new stories from them learn lessons from them that I've been able to you know um, put into my own life and use myself. So I, I think the the podcasts have not only been beneficial for for them, promotion for them, and and for my audience to get to know them, but also for myself because of the fact that I can learn so much from them. Yeah. So what is your basis of your podcast? Like what what is your goal with it? Yeah. So I have on guests that you know pretty distinguished guests that that have accomplished a lot in their careers so by bringing them on i want to introduce them to people who may not know of them or people who do know of them but yeah. want to see the side of them so really it's to you know talk about the accomplishments that they've had but more so learn about the lessons uh that they've learned along the way because yeah. i think that these lessons could be useful to somebody else that's out there whether it's 100%. people like us that feel like we know it all when we really don't or whether it's young kids that are that know nothing yet and yeah. they're trying to learn from people that have gone on to do great things uh so that's really what the premise of my podcast is about uh, and other than that it's also to have like interesting and fun topics things that we may not know um things that they tell us that they probably thought they weren't going to tell me on the show but they right and then they tell you and you're like oh this <laughs> is another good topic <laughs> another good topic and so you know it ends up being you know a, a really fun conversation so i love that i love that and it's just getting to know them too and having fun and like you said touching into the broadcast side of things has that yeah. always been something you like you really are amazing on camera so i feel like that's kind of you know, something that you're going to tap into a little later in life too. I'm definitely going to tap into it later. This is just the start. And, you yeah. know, I just love, you know, human interaction. It's just always been something that I loved. And, and it, I think it's interesting to learn about other people and to be able to talk with them face to face, you know, because our generation has become so much of, you know, technology oh. that, yeah. you know, constant messaging and emailing and, and, you know, you don't really get that that one-on-one -on -one. One -on -one yes. interaction conversation that you used to back in the day so anytime that I can do that um I take the opportunity I think that's so cool I absolutely love that and that's kind of what I'm doing with this is just getting to know who they are behind their game whether it be a coach an athlete female in sports you know mm -hmm. anybody you know people that are just in the business and that maybe have passions outside of you know, playing basketball or whatever the sport is. I just think it's so interesting because fans don't get to see that side of you guys. Exactly. And I've been in sports for seven years now. And I think it's so cool that I've been able to see it. So I kind of want to like give a little peek to everyone, mm -hmm. you know, and let them know that you guys are extremely hardworking at the end of the day as well. So I think that's very interesting. But do you have a goal with broadcasting? Like what would be the coolest job you could ever have with broadcasting i know <laughs> there's a lot that's a tough question i mean you know at first i think when it came to broadcasting what i considered broadcasting when i was in college going you know just starting yeah i would just consider the typical broadcasting job you know doing sports um yeah. Did you do it in college no i didn't i didn't okay. do it in college but you know like that's the first thing that came to mind was like doing something like calling a game or, yep. or, or, um, you know, 
maybe you're not calling the game, but you're talking about sports in some type of fashion, like how they do on Sports Center. Um, that was my initial reaction to broadcasting. But there's so many different avenues and opportunities. I think my goal, um, you know, I haven't thought about this much, but you just asked me. So right? I, it, it, my goal would probably just to be to have somewhat of what I'm doing right now, just to have my own show. Yeah. Um, but to see it expand on what I'm doing right now, obviously. Um, but to get it to a point where it's like, you know, it's really just my own show and, and I'm enjoying what I'm doing. I'm talking to guests who I love to talk it's to. Fun. You exactly. can do what you want because it's your brand at the end of the day. <laughs> exactly. Um, but that's, that's pretty much how I see it. And obviously, you know, the more and more I do this, I'll take it and, you know, carry on what I like, stop doing what I didn't like, yeah. um, add new things to it to make it even more interesting for my yeah. viewers. Um, but that's kind of like the ultimate thing that I hope to get out of this. But that's not to yeah. say that I won't actually have my own real job where I'm like working for somebody. Oh yeah, you don't know. Life is crazy. It could take you that's one true. way or the other, but it's interesting to hear what your goal is with broadcasting because I think there's yeah. so many different routes Sure. that people don't know and podcast is huge these days especially with you know quarantine everyone's stuck mm -hmm. inside it's nice to listen to something yeah. especially with sports too because we're not mm -hmm. really we're just getting into it now but exactly. when this all started we weren't really in it so exactly yep so what has been your most exciting experience thus far in your sports career I know that's tough but is there one thing that maybe sticks out to you exciting experience like even on the court or off the court you're talking about either one if mm -hmm. one sticks out to you exciting experience yeah. be college g league yeah um you know i think you know i think that my you know my best game in college is kind of something that always means something to me because oh, yeah. it you know, it's not like it made me, but it's something that I look back on to help me know in my head, like, hey, I belong here. I can do this mm -hmm. in those times where, uh, you know, we all go through those times where we're kind of like, oh, maybe this oh, isn't no. meant for me. You know, I didn't do as well as I wanted to. Mm -hmm. um, th that game just kind of helps bring me back full circle. So the game against Arizona, I was a junior. Hey, at Santa woo! <laughs> oh, did you go to Arizona? No, I went to ASU, but Arizona, I'll take it. I have so many friends. I'm born and raised in Arizona, so I have so many friends that yeah. either went ASU or U of A, but... Yeah, you know everybody. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah, we were playing Arizona, and they were a ranked team, and, you know, oh, nobody yeah. expected us to, you know, even really compete with them. And, you know, we ended up taking it into either one overtime or two overtimes. But uh, we, we had a chance to win the game before those overtimes, but we didn't. But that's besides the point. But, <laughs> that's that, that's uh, yeah. not necessary. Yeah. That's in the past. <laughs> yeah, we, won't, we won't harp on that. But, uh, <laughs> but I had, you know, 44 points that game. And that was like my first time scoring 40 points, like for real, like against, you know, when you're an adult. So I think that is a game that I really um, – that I keep in my head and I keep in my mind. And I remember the stat that they said or – I think James Harden had set the record for points there at 43 oh. points. So I had beat it once I got 44. So, you know, just to know like something like you did something like that was pretty, was pretty amazing. So I, that's a game that I continue uh, to look back on in the times where, you know, I may be struggling or things aren't going my way. Oh Yeah. Just to give you that a little bit of motivation, like you're in the right spot, you're here for a reason. It just didn't happen out of sheer luck. Like you put in that hard work and that effort. I think that's always really cool to look back on. And how was that playing with like against James Harden and all that kind of stuff? Were you around at that time? No, 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 no. Oh, so okay. I didn't play against James, but James Harden played in that same tournament. Oh, okay, okay. Before, yeah. So James, I'm like that would have been surreal to look yeah, back that on. Been, that would have been surreal, but yeah. So I graduated in 2017. So that okay. year, that might have been 2016 then uh, yeah. when that was going on. But um, you know, they had that. Um, tournament every year at Cal State for oh, yeah. Thanksgiving. Yep. Um, so he he scored 43 points there at, at some point, and then I, once I scored 44, that broke the record. But um, you're like, okay, cool, Thank yeah, you. <laughs> yeah, perfect, perfect. But yeah. you know, James Harden, you know, like is you know, it's just great to hear that name just because of the fact oh. that we, we know how good he is, and and a, 
for me as a guy who watches him a lot, you know, it was big time. And, and, you know, I've learned a lot about James Harden, not through James Harden, but through my second head coach at Santa Clara University, who was Herb Sendek, who was at Arizona State. Oh, okay. Uh, he was the head coach at Arizona State when James Harden was there. So, um, so, so cool. you know, he was able to share not a lot of knowledge with me about James and, and how he goes about the game. So that was able to help me too. Yeah, he's a huge legend, especially even now, like when I graduated from ASU, he was yeah. like still a legend to this day. Like, oh, he went to ASU. It's, mm -hmm. it's just cool to see that, you know, he came from here exactly. and to see him, you know, mm -hmm. killing it. And then, were you there when he – I was wasn't. Like, no, no, I wasn't. So I graduated in 2016. Okay. So you're, so, yeah. So it's been some time, but yeah. he's to this day, like I'll even like, I think a couple years ago, I went to the ASU like gear store and mm -hmm. they have James Harden t-shirts, Harden, you know, jerseys, like that's yeah. just a household name at ASU. So it's like, you're just never yeah, gonna... they're definitely going to have that. Everywhere. Oh yeah. For forever. He is just <laughs> like, amazing. I think it's so cool. But so do you have a favorite player then growing up in the NBA or even now, I guess too. Yeah. So two people, okay. uh, my favorite player was always Kobe Bryant, you know, oh. rest in peace, yeah. the late, great Kobe Bryant, you know, that was very tough and sad day when we all got that news, oh, especially for me just because of the fact that I always looked up to him. You know, I watched everything he did, not just on the court, but off the court and, and seeing everything that he was starting to get into after basketball, yeah. uh, which is, you know, kind of how I carry my life. And when you see me doing the talk show and yeah. different things like that, even though I still play, taking a page out of his book and showing people, hey, I can do more than just basketball. Multifaceted. You can do yeah. everything. You can do everything. Yeah. And so, you know, when he won that Oscar, I'm sure people were probably like, whoa, like I didn't expect to see that. Yeah. Yep. So uh, so I really liked that aspect of Kobe just because he just surprised people. He, he, he never wanted you to think that he could only do one thing. And he showed that in the game of basketball, especially. But um, that's always been my favorite player. Um, but other than if there was anybody other than Kobe Bryant, and currently, my favorite player is Steph Curry. And uh, you know, pretty, much every, pretty much everybody knows that about me, is that I love uh, Steph Curry. I love the way he plays, uh, model my game after him a lot. And I study him a lot and watch what he does off the court as well, too. So yes. those two players are like the only two players you ever hear me really talk about. I love that. But I like how you said they're both – very multifaceted and they're not just you know on the court doing their thing they're doing a lot outside of the mm -hmm. sport yeah. and I like how they have a personality you know mm -hmm. like I said it's very difficult sometimes for you to see their personalities or you know mm -hmm. their particular style even like walking into games you guys have a cool style and you don't really get to see that in some yeah. other sports so it's it's nice to have that individuality and both of those guys are oh, amazing but I mm -hmm. love that me too. So yeah. do you have any, like a piece of advice for any upcoming basketball players? I know it's such a, it's a crazy journey. And I think coming from someone that has been there and done that and has seen it all, it's nice to hear from, from you to get a piece of advice for them. Yeah. You know, most what I could say is probably just trust in yourself. And, you know, I know that's cliche, but that's really what it comes down to, especially when you get to the level that I'm at or the people that are, you know, in the NBA. Because if you don't trust in yourself, it's probably not going to work out. Who's going to trust in you? Exactly. You're going to have times where it's going to be hard. You're going to feel like you don't belong. Yeah. But um, if you trust in yourself and know that, you know, this is just a little bump in the road, then you will bounce back from that. Because I've had multiple times where that's happened to me in life, whether it was with my AAU team, uh, joining them, you know, and my AAU team is, you know, well known in the Chicago area and, you know, they're all known for having, you know, all the best players. So um, when I first joined them, you know, everybody was so good that, you know, I didn't even really get to play in the beginning. Uh, it was hard for me to kind of like, initiate myself into the culture of their team just because of the yeah. fact that I was new and you know I almost had a time for, like, maybe I don't belong here maybe I should go back to my old AAU yeah. team it's comfortable Very. it's new yeah, it's new and um and so that uh you know quick side note the second thing that I would say to 
up and coming basketball players is get comfortable being uncomfortable because that's what I felt like in that situation. I wasn't comfortable being with the new group of people. Mm-hmm. I wasn't comfortable with being with all of the best athletes in the state. Um, not that I didn't want to be, but I wasn't comfortable with it just because of the fact that that's not where I was at before. Yep. I was a great player, but I was surrounded by other players that may have not have been at your level at my level. Yes. Exactly. And so, you know, it was real cool to see my coach, uh, my coach for the Illinois Wolves team recruit me to his team because he saw that in me. That's why he pulled me from that other team. He's like, Jerry, you don't belong here. You need to come with us. That's um, awesome. Yeah. That's and awesome. so, you know, but he's like, he coached the way he coached us in high school is the way a college coach would coach you or the way a, a G league coach would coach you. So it was, you know, when I came in, even though he recruited me to come there, it's not like he was, you know, giving me the silver spoon and saying, you know, you're going to play all the minutes, you're going to start yeah. right play and all that. So basically, you know, I sat at the end of the bench for like a few games and, you know, it was just, it was, it was real crazy to me. Like I was, there was a point where we had a tournament and, you know, they have X amount of chairs on the sideline for guys to sit on the bench. Yeah. I didn't even get a chair because we had so many people on the bench that I had to sit on the floor. And I kid you not, when I was sitting that on was that- was a reality bench, check for you. You're and, like, <gasps> Real quick, when I saw when I, floor, <laughs> I sat on that floor and I really just started thinking and contemplating life. Like, like really, do I really want to play basketball? Is this really for me? Like, why am I sitting on this floor? Like, this is yeah. crazy. So what can I work on, you know, you start analyzing on like, what can I work on? What can I do to get better? Like to not exactly. be able to sit on this floor right now. <laughs> exactly. I was trying to think of everything. And so yeah. basically, that's why I say trust in yourself, because at the end of the day, although I could have folded, I decided to trust in myself and say, you know, you do belong here. We just have, you know, it's going to not, not everything's going to come right away. So you have to figure it out. And so that's exactly what I did. And I ended up cracking the starting rotation from yeah. that point on uh, up until, you know, I received a whole bunch of scholarship offers uh, while being with that team. So uh, all I can say to upcoming basketball players is trust in yourself and be comfortable being uncomfortable. And I think those two things will pretty much maneuver you in any type of way, no matter what situation you get into uh, throughout your career. I love that. I think that's so smart because like you said, at the end of the day, it's, it's you, yourself and I, you have to trust mm-hmm. yourself. Cause if you don't trust yourself and you don't believe in yourself, they're not going to believe in yourself. Exactly. So mm-hmm. I think it's so smart of you, but I think that's about it. I really appreciate you coming on today. I think it's been so much fun getting to know you and your story. It's so unique. And I just thank you so much for joining. No, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Like what you're doing. And I hope you you continue to have success with your other guests for sure. Thank you so much. And I hope all the success for your podcast as well. Thank you so much. I appreciate it.